you would grab God's divine library, your sword, stand and turn with me to Daniel chapter 3. I want to pick up today beginning at verse 16. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be back. I miss y'all when I'm not here. That's how family is. They work your nerves, but you miss them. Daniel chapter 3, continuing a series of sermons out of the book of Daniel called Unshakable. Chapter 3, beginning at verse number 16, if you have it, say amen. We're putting it on the screen for you here in the room and on East City. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the text, and we find these words recorded. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. The form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. I'll pick up the rest later. Look at your neighbor, smile at him real quick. Tell him, neighbor, got a word for you. We need, to be we need to be faithful in the fire. In the fire. Amen, amen. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Keep your Bibles open. As I'm back from quick week vacation, I want to preach from the subject, Faithful in the Fire. I want to confess at the onset that this sermon may not hit 100% of us. I'm really preaching to people that have found themselves in an unfair place. People that may be in an uncomfortable place. Those amongst us who may be in uncertain places. Or simply put in the words of the text, in a hot place. What I wanna begin depositing in us today from this text is that faith is necessary. I think oftentimes the problem about faith, and it's necessary because the scriptures tell us that without faith it is impossible to please God. The problem is, and I'm gonna reiterate this because I want this to get in our spirit, the problem is we have a one-stranded faith when we really require a two-stranded faith. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? See, the first strand of my faith, and we see this with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The first strand of my faith is believing that God can deliver me. 
uh, that they get thrown into a furnace as they're going into the furnace, they are clear. The God we serve is able to deliver us. And most of us stay right there with that strand of faith. But I don't just need a strand of faith that is a step toward my deliverance. I also need a strand of faith that enables me to accept God's sovereign will if he doesn't deliver me. I just said a whole lot more than you realize. See, most of us have enough faith that God will deliver me. But we have to recognize that God will not always deliver me. And I have to have a mindset going into whatever I'm going into that if God still does not deliver me, I will not shriek back and change my mind about the God I serve. In other words, y'all, my praise and worship to God is not contingent upon what he does in my life. It is contingent about who he is in my life. And when I recognize if he does not deliver, he's still God. If he doesn't heal me of my sickness, he's still God. If he does not restore the marriage, he is still God. Where are my believers in here today that recognize that I'm not worshiping him for what he does? I'm worshiping him because I recognize that I need two strands of my faith. Faith one is faith enough to do what you said. But faith two is when I do what you said, if I don't like the outcome, I still have to stand on this must be your will for me. Put your hands on yourself and say, I have to be content with either. I, I got to be content with him delivering me or not. Either. Daniel is both history and prophecy. This is not just story time in the Bible. This is, we believe as believers, as Christians, this is a literal happening during the reign of a literal king. That while Nebuchadnezzar is reigning as king in Babylon, that he has instructed a fiery furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. This is prophecy and it is history. It is history because it literally happened, but it is prophecy because it is a picture of the time when many of God's people, we call them tribulation saints, will be under the heel of the Antichrist during the Great Tribulation. Daniel 3 teaches us that since God is sovereign, everybody say sovereign, that since God is sovereign, we must put our faith in him as we stand before the fire. This, this historical narrative, I'm going to reiterate this because I want it in our spirit, is that faith requires obedience to what God commanded me, and also trust in his sovereign will when I don't like the outcome. Let me share the story with you. Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar is on the heels of his dream just being interpreted. His dream has been interpreted, and he decides the scriptures uh, reference 60 cubits. We don't measure things in cubits in 2024. And so he literally builds... Uh, a statue. He builds a statue nine stories tall. He builds a statue nine stories tall. And I want to remind everyone that's in the room that bigness is not proof of realness. That just because we build something big does not mean God is in it. And the reason I'm going to park here for a moment is because we have such stock we put in how big things are. You could have a big car but not have gas money to put in it. You could have a big house but don't get along with each other inside the house. So just because something is big does not make it real. He builds this big statue, nine stories tall. He builds this big statue and um, he says to the people, this is what y'all going to do. And we're going to strike up a big old band. And we're going to play the music, all the instrument we have. And after we play all the instruments that we have, the whole community has gathered together, all of his governors and satraps and administrators, and everybody has gathered together. And we're going to play the big band. We're going to strike the big band up. And at the right time, all of you are going to bow down to my image. Now, before I unpack this text, let me remind us of some things that's easy to miss. 
Well, one of the things that I want you to see is that it is very possible to be too big for God to use. Nebuchadnezzar has made himself so big. Nine stories tall is his image now that God can't use him. I want to park here for a moment and say something to the house. It is possible to be too big for God to use, but I can never be too little for God to use. And that's why all of us have to learn to check our egos and we have to operate in humility because sometimes you might be anointed, but you're too big for God to use. I might have a good voice or a good preacher or a good teacher, but I'm so big, God is like, no, I'm good. Give me somebody who doesn't have their chest stuck out, somebody that's not bragging on themselves, somebody that's not taking the credit for themselves. Let me find that person that when I get done working in their life, they're going to have no other testimony to say, but God was the one that did it. Give me that person that's going to give me the glory, that's going to give me the credit. And the reason I know this is right is because over and over again, read it in your scriptures. I told you to keep your Bibles open. Verse 2, verse 3, verse 7, verse 12, verse 18. If you look at the last few words in all of those verses, they always end with Nebuchadnezzar had set up. You, you see it in verse 2. Nebuchadnezzar had set up. They, they reference verse number 3. But when he brings together all the magistrates and the officials together, they begin dedicating the image that he had set up. You, you see it again in verse number seven, that, that he, he, he tells them crying out and, and, and speaking their language. And he, said, and he set that up. Where are you going, pastor? I've got to be careful pumping myself up so that other people may think much of me. I want to encourage somebody for a moment. You don't need to promote you. It's going to get a little tight in here this morning, but we're going to get some deliverance up in here. And some of y'all can't say amen because we use social media as a way to set us up. Let me make me look good. Let me draw attention to me. But at the end of the day, I can't set me up. This, this has never happened to me before. I've been pastoring 24 years, and another pastor had my phone number, and he said, Pastor, I'm going to have this, this well-known TV pastor call you. Can I give him your phone number? I said, sure, give him my phone number. And sure enough, I hung up from him within five minutes. This unknown number is coming in. I figured maybe who did this person? I answered the phone. It's somebody I see on TBN and all these different stations. And, and, and he literally starts sharing with me about, about this thing that he's working on. And literally, literally asks me to invite him to preach here. That, that's a little new for me. I've been pastoring 24 years. I've, can I just go ahead and park here? Some of y'all are going to be so upset with me. If the only way you can play somewhere is, to, is, is for you to ask somebody to ask you to play. If the only way you can sing is for somebody to ask you to sing. If you got to go to somebody else and say, can I sing in your church? Can I play in your church? Y'all not talking, but that's all right. Can I preach in your church? Then something is wrong that you setting you up. See, you can't set you up. You got to let God set you up. Is there anybody in church that can look back over your life and see how God has opened some doors and made some ways and God has put you in front of the right folk because you were not setting you up? I want to encourage somebody. If God has a gift on your life and an anointing on your life, you don't need to blow your own whistle and promote your own self. God know the phone number to every pastor, every producer, every movie maker. He knows the phone number to every publisher. And if you stay faithful and obedient to what God has called you to do, God will open up a door I don't even know existed. Over and over again, you see example. Up and he set himself up. He set it up. He set it up, making himself big. And he makes himself so big that God cannot use him. And so look at the image set up. One side of the town, the whole community's come together. One side of the town, you've got these royal guards on the right. And on the left, you've got this raging furnace. You've got the band showing up to play. And at the right time, the whole community is going to bow down and kneel at the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Notice what they have. Sights and sounds to allure people. Okay. The sights of a nine-story 
golden image. The sounds of every instrument imaginable. The problem is Satan is still using sights and sounds to captivate the people of God. That's why we dance to music with a good beat, but lyrics to say beat women and call them bees. No. That's why we promote music about your baby mamas and we promote music about violence in our community because we're not paying attention to the lyric. All I know is I like the beat. I like the movement. I like how it feels. I like how it sounds. And Satan is still making stuff look good. That's why women will walk around on the beach with a thong. Something wrong if your beach clothes look like your underwear. Y'all had to look at me like that. I'm not scared of not one of y'all. At the end of the day, some stuff need to be underwear. Some stuff need to not be exposed. Some stuff need to not be seen. And Satan is still using sights and sounds to cultivate and captivate people. So the problem is they have gold, but they don't have God. They have music, but they don't have a Messiah. They have pomp, but they don't have power. They have fame, but they don't have favor. They've got sights and sounds, but they don't have a savior. What profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? At the end of the day, I'd rather have a little bit with a great big God than to have a whole lot and don't have any relationship with him. So they've got sights and sounds to captivate the people. The sights and sounds captivate the people. Everybody bows down, and the whole community now has bowed down. But there are three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who refuse to offer an excuse I got to thinking if this was 2024, we would come up with convenient excuses on why this one time I could bow down. Let me, let me, let me share some of them with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if this is 2024, be like, well, I, if I don't bow down and I get thrown in the fire, it might kill me and that's going to affect my family. Uh, no. You know what? I could bow down. Let me wink at y'all. I, I can bow down because the Lord knows my heart. I, I, I can bow down because after all, we do live now in Babylon, and as believers, aren't we supposed to abide by the laws of the land? You know, you know what? I, I, I can bow down because if I don't, they're going to think us Yahweh believers are fanatics. I, I, I can bow down because if I bow down today, I'll live until tomorrow, and tomorrow I can minister to Nebuchadnezzar. They said, no, we are not serving and bowing down to any other God. Let me give you the story. I'm almost there. Watch what happens. The same folk who had been resenting their quick ascent to leadership. You got to remember, there's some governors, administrators, satraps. They've been in Babylon their whole life. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just got there. Because of their excellent character... They started surpassing the people who had been there all along. So the folk who've been in Babylon, the folk who've been at Word Tabernacle for 15 years, look at the folk who've been there six months. And they watching like, I've been here all this time. 
how they get to sing a solo. I, I've been here all this time. How, how they get to be on the dance team. So, so this group is secretly frustrated by the ascent, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and when they don't bow down, first chance they get is they go to the king. Say, Nebuchadnezzar, those guys that you thought so much of, that you promoted all quick ahead of us, let me tell you about them guys. They refuse to bow down to your image. Nebuchadnezzar says, let me see them. They bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in front of him. Bring him in front of him. He says, look, you know the story here, man. We're going to play this music again. When we play this music again, you see this nine-story image, you're going to bow down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, king, let me tell you something. We'll take our chances inside the furnace. Because the God we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. I feel preaching right now. And then they got to thinking about that thing. And then they said, but you know what? I'm not like that with God. He don't owe me a deliverance. Which blows my mind the next thing he says. But if not, I'd rather die in a furnace serving the God that I love than to live outside the service and betray the God that got me where I am. I wish I had a handful of people in this room or on City Camp that could look back over your life. I'd rather have a little bit with a great big God than to have all of this stuff and live my life without God. I'll take my chances with God. Tell somebody I'll take my chances with them. I... And so they throw them into the furnace. And in throwing them into the furnace, they teach us three lessons about being faithful in the fire. The first lesson they teach us about being faithful in the fire, Corey, grab this, is first of all, in the fire, I learn the lesson of persecution. Whew. In the fire, these are hard sermons for Christians. We, we like the sermons, slap your neighbor 10 times, tell them God about to give you a million dollars. We, we, we like them sermons, jump up, spin around three times. When you get down on your feet, all your bills going to be paid. We, we like them kind of sermons. We don't like the kind of sermons that remind us that sometimes I'm going to stand for what's right and I'm going to wind up in an uncomfortable place. Sometimes I'm going to stand for what God tells me to stand for and I'm going to lose some friends. I'm going to lose some acquaintance. Sometimes I'm going to stand what God tells me to stand for and things are not going to be like I wanted them to be. Notice what happens. God is going to be so good if we can get in our spirit. Help me preach it, Lord. This is the king, Nebuchadnezzar, that has been promoting Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now he stands in front of them, and they say, watch what they say. No. Got to put a pen in this. Could it be? that the only reason some folk are still in your life is because the situation has not come yet for you to tell them no. I might as well park here and preach, y'all. See, I don't need people in my life that's only here because I'm always going to say yes. You need to, you don't really know where people are in your life until you tell them no, until you tell them they're wrong, until you tell them their attitude is crappy, until you tell them things are not right. Then you know where folks, and part of the problem is I only want to surround myself with yes people. I'm in the scriptures. He tells them no, and my Bible says the expression upon his face changes. Verse 19 says, he winds up a face full of fury. Scriptures say in the Hebrew account of it, that literally the visage of his face changed. Yo, we got to be careful because our faces will display my emotions. See, your face will betray you. I'm going to say it again. I said, I said your face. Well, Sometimes you don't even know it yourself. 
You're just sitting there, and before you know it, you got your face all tore up, and you don't even realize the Lord has already put you on display. Your face will show your emotions. Your face will show when you're angry. Your face will show when you're jealous. Your face will show uh, whatever my emotions. My face will show surprise. It will show joy. It will show disappointment. So it says his face changed. Watch this. He goes and in anger, heat the furnace seven times higher. The Bible says everything flammable on the boys was kept on them. Trousers, jacket, turban. And the Bible says, don't, don't, I'm going somewhere, stay close. They were bound, which means they could not walk in the furnace on their own. The reason I know they didn't walk on the furnace on their own is because the Bible says they were cast into the furnace. Now put a pin in that because I'm coming to pull it out. Because of the emotion of Nebuchadnezzar, he makes the furnace seven times higher. Because it is seven times higher, those that throw in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the text says certain men of valor, they wind up being burned by the additional heat just by their proximity to the furnace. I got to park here for a moment. Who are you killing because of your emotions? Come on, who, who's not living because of your emotion? You got, you je jealous and mad at somebody. Now you want all your friends not to speak to them. Who is it that has become a victim of your emotions? So because he's mad, he turns up the heat, turns up the heat. They throw him in and those men immediately die. Family, all I'm trying to get you to see is that we don't recognize that all of us will go through lessons of persecution. We're going to go moments where we're going to be thrown into fires and furnaces of isolation. Because you're going to make a decision. You're going to have to live by yourself, do it by yourself. Furnaces of intimidation. Where people will try to intimidate you to force you to compromise your convictions. Come on, furnaces of criticism. Don't you dare be successful. That folk will then criticize what God has done in your life. The first lesson is the lesson in persecution. But there's a second lesson. Not only is there the lesson in persecution, but secondly, there is the lesson of preservation. Everybody say preservation. Uh, uh, grab it, grab it. They bound them. They cast them in. The moment they get close to throw them in, those who bind them die. I need to park for a moment. We have to be cautious in our efforts to damage other people. Because sometimes the heat that got prepared for them might wind up getting to the person that threw them in the fire. I wish I had a handful of people that understand you reap what you sow, baby. And you got to be careful how we treat people because at the end of the day, we got to treat people in a way. How many of us can be damaged because we were wishing damage on other folk? They throw them in. Now watch this. Nebuchadnezzar, he looks in. The whole nation is around him. He says, wait a minute, y'all. Didn't we put in three? Yeah, we put in three. Why we see four? Watch the text now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, y'all come, come on out. Comes on out. Body says he, they. I have a hypersensitivity to smoke. Like I can't, I can't be in a room where people have, they don't have to be smoking currently. I just, I can't, I just have a hypersensitivity to it. You, 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 
You, you could go in your car right now, smoke a cigarette, get out the car, and when you come in here, we smell your cigarette. Y'all, y'all, come on, don't act, that, don't act like that's not true. Here's my point. They've been in a furnace. They send his administrators to inspect them. They start sniffing. No smell at all. They look at their turban. Not any facial hair singed. They go over their whole bodies. No evidence that they've been in the fire at all. Except one thing that got burned. I'll tell you all that in a minute. Because most preachers get this text wrong. He looks at their life and he says, I can't really explain this. But I, the fourth one, this is Nebuchadnezzar talking who not even saved. He don't even have a spiritual vocabulary. He says the fourth one looks like the son of God. Yo, this was a theophany. This is, this is the reincarnated Lord Jesus appearance. Before he's birthed in Bethlehem, he shows up at, with Abraham. Before he's even birthed in Bethlehem, he wrestles with Jacob. Before he's birthed in Bethlehem, he shows up in a fiery furnace in human form. Good Lord, I'm about to preach about Jesus here. Can I tell you how awesome he is? Folk will cast you into something. Folk will set you up to be destroyed, set you up not to recover, thinking you don't have help, thinking you don't have resources. Meanwhile, the Lord is looking up from heaven, saying, you know what I think I'll do? I think I'll step out and put on human form and show up inside the fire. And God is so awesome. Let me tell you how awesome God is. Because the Bible never says he stops the fire. Steps up into the furnace. I don't know what he said, but he talked to his own creation. And since he created fire, he says, I know I made you to be hot, but today I'm gonna take your heat away. Today I'm gonna cool you down. God is so awesome and God is so able that God is able to take heat away from fire. If God can take heat away from fire, don't you know he can fix whatever's going on in your life? If God can take heat away from fire, God can make a way for you. If God can take, tell your neighbor he can take the heat away. But I need you to get this in your spirit. Before he took the heat away, Toya, he had to let it stay hot long enough to burn one thing. Most preachers say nothing got burned in the furnace. You ain't reading your Bible. Something did get burned in the furnace because my Bible says they were bound. And I know at least they were bound at their ankles. The reason I know they were bound at their ankles it's because they had to get cast in. But my Bible says they didn't get cast out. They walked out. Which means sometimes God will put you in the fire to burn off what's been binding you. And I don't know what's binding you, but God will put you in the heat so that whatever's holding you back can get burned off. Whatever's hindering your walk can get burned off. Whatever's in the way can get burned. Is there anybody in church that knows I've been in the heat? But God used the heat to burn off what's been holding me back, to burn off what's keeping my joy, to burn it off. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I got a math test. Tell your neighbor I got a math test. 
when he cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the furnace, how many people did he throw in? When he went looking inside, how many did he see? Stay close. When he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come out, how many came out? Wait a minute, three went in, four was in, three came out, which means I have one to identify. The question is, what happened to the fourth one? I'm so glad you asked. He's still in the fire. So when you go through the fire this week, Jesus is with you. When you go through the fire in your situation, Jesus is with you. When you go through the fire at work, Jesus is with you. Tell your neighbor, you're not by yourself. That's why he says in Isaiah 43, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, and I am with you. Come on, tell two people he's still in the fire. He's so when I get thrown in the fire, I'm not by myself. Put your hands on yourself. Say, I'm not by myself. I'm not by myself. I know you feel like you're by yourself in that sickness. He's still in the fire, baby. I know you feel like you're by yourself with that job situation. He's still in the fire, baby. I know you feel like you're by yourself when you're standing at the casket. He's still in the fire. Is there anybody in church that can celebrate? My God is still in the fire. Come on, tell somebody he's still in the fire. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Come on, somebody shout it, I'm not alone. Come on, tell somebody, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in it. I'm not by myself in it. I'm not struggling all by myself. He's still in the fire. I'm almost done. Huh? Tell your neighbor, be faithful in the fire. Because the fire teaches lessons of persecution. The fire teaches lessons of preservation. I'm done, y'all. We're going home. But the fire teaches me lessons about promotion. Grab my Bible. <laughs> Look at what he says. Nebuchadnezzar spoke. Verse 28. Blessed be the God. Y'all oh, not ready. of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who said his angel, delivered his servants who trusted in him. They have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own. This is Nebuchadnezzar talking. Therefore, I make a decree any people, any nation, any language, which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. Their houses 
shall be made an ash heap. Because there is no There is no other God who can deliver like this. Are y'all ready? I said, there's no other God who can deliver like this. Y'all, come on, are y'all not ready? I said, there's no other God who can deliver like this. Which now I understand, Ray, why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fire. They were never gonna be destroyed by the fire. But God was trying to find a way to get to Nebuchadnezzar. And sometimes believing people need to jump in the fire for unbelieving people. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but sometimes people, people that are not saved are watching how saved people go through their issue. And I can't go through my problem cussing God and doubting God when I'm going through my issue. I gotta say, God, you're able. God, you can fix it. God, you can do it. And I'm here to tell you, somebody else is gonna get delivered by your faithfulness in the fire. Oh God. Tell your neighbor, don't mess up your witness. Come on, don't mess up your testimony. All that God is good when you have a job. He just as good when you're unemployed. All that God is good when you got a boo. You just as good when you're by yourself. I'm here to tell you, if I'm going to serve him, I got to serve him at daylight and midnight. If I'm going to serve him, I got to serve him when things are up and when things are down. If I'm going to worship him and serve him, I got to do it, whatever the situation. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar looking, he's like, I don't know him, but I know one thing, can't no God deliver like that. I'm done. Is there anybody in church with a testimony that no God can deliver like my God? Come on, tell somebody no God can deliver like my God. I want y'all to repeat after me. I won't bow. I won't bend. And I won't budge. And if I don't bow. And if I don't bend. And if I don't budge. Then God gonna make sure. That I don't burn. Oh God. Come on. Can we take 30 seconds. And give God a I did not burn praise. Can we take a moment and give God a I didn't die in my sin praise? Can I take a moment and worship God? Tell two people I didn't burn, I didn't burn. I'm still alive. What I know is God is able. Somebody shout, God is able. Is there anybody with a but if not praise? I don't know that he's gonna do it, but he is able. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above and beyond all that we could hope, think, or even imagine. Be faithful in the Bible. Come on, somebody shout, don't bend, don't bow. Don't budge, and I'm not burning. Faithful in the fire. Somebody say, faithful in the fire. Faithful in the fire. 